Hey guys, the subject of this video is going to be the iconal equation, which is part of geometric optics. In uh, this video, we're going to, and the series of videos, we're going to derive a set of differential equations that can be used to trace the path that light takes through a medium. Now, if you haven't heard of the iconal equations, and maybe you've not heard of geometric optics, but if you have had a physics course, it's, it's pretty likely that you've heard about Snell's law. And Snell's law is a good introduction for as to why we need something like the iconal equation. Now, Snell's law describes uh, a case where we have a light ray that is entering, um, it's entering the interface between two mediums. The first medium where the speed of light is V1. In the second medium, the speed of light is different. It has speed of V2. And so what Snell's law tells us is the relationship between the incident angle, which we call theta1 for the light ray coming in, and the angle of the light ray coming out, which we call theta2. And Snell's law says that the sine of theta2 uh, divided by the sine of theta 1 is going to be equal to the ratio of the speed of light in each of those mediums. Now, why isn't this law good enough? Why can't we use this to do ray tracing? Well, we, we can use it to do ray tracing if we're dealing with things like lenses or uh, uh, things where there is a distinct change in medium where the speed changes from one speed to another speed abruptly. But if the speed actually changes smoothly, uh, then Snell's law doesn't really help us because Snell's law makes an assumption about there is an abrupt change between the two mediums. One example where that uh, there is no such abrupt change would be in the atmosphere. Uh, in the atmosphere, the light uh, light speed changes depending on your elevation. It changes based on the pressure, uh, the temperature, the humidity, and other factors. And to to describe and to ray trace light's path through the atmosphere, we are going to need a more complex formula, which is the iconal equation. I'll go ahead and write the iconal equation, which is that the absolute value the gradient of phi of r equals the inverse of the function v of r. And the meaning of each of these terms is that r vector is a position in space. In space. And you know, for a three-dimensional case, r would contain the components of x, y, and z. And we have that v, v of r is the speed of light at position r. And, you know, contrasting this with Snell's law, where the speed of light could only have one of two values, depending on where it was, where the, where the ray was propagating. In this case, the speed of light v can change smoothly depending on the, the value of r. We can have a unique speed of light everywhere, okay? And then the last part is, of course, the, the function phi, um, phi of r. And this function represents the travel time of a wave front to reach R. And to describe what this actually means, uh, I need to make a more detailed example. Let's see, I'm gonna paste in here a uh, map, map of Britain. And we're gonna look a bit closer at what this map is. So the colors on this map represents the time it takes to travel from Cambridge to any place on the map. 
in the top right we have the color scale it says how many hours and we see that also among the color we have some thin white lines and they describe uh, those are lines where the travel time is constant so for example let's look at this white line right here that i'm highlighting and what this line signifies is that uh, the travel time is three hours to this line that is the same as saying that phi of r equals three hours right so this this line represents all the positions r and this line continues of course uh, it represents all the positions r where the travel time is three hours so phi of r equals three hours you can look at another line and then the line just outside it just highlighting that and this this line represents phi of r being equal to four hours okay so let's let's look at uh, a person traveling here let's say a person is traveling from this place to this place and from the map let's say it's given that this distance corresponds to a 40 kilometer distance and we see that the time it takes to travel this distance because he's moving from the three hour contour to the four hour contour the change in travel time has has to be one hour okay that is to say the gradient of the travel time by this this travel right yeah, the travel time has changed one hour so you can write that the gradient of phi of r equal one divided by 40. let's look at another place we can travel let's say we travel from here and we travel in this case also 40 kilometers in this direction well again it's given that the travel is 40 kilometers but the travel time in this case we have only traveled about halfway between the contours right so we can say that the if we travel about halfway between them the, the travel time will only change by half an hour so we can say 0 0.5 hours for change in those 40 kilometers we write that the gradient of phi equals a half divided by 40 and you know intuitively we see that in the first one where we traveled 40 kilometers in an hour uh, the speed must of, of course be slower right it's going to be slow compared to the second case where we travel uh, 40 kilometers in half an hour right that's, that's twice as fast so this is going to be fast and to summarize what we're observing here is that when the travel time function phi phi of r when it changes quickly uh, in other words when the the contours here are tight together like in the first example uh, said in another way when the gradient of the travel time is large when the gradient of travel time is large then we observe that we are traveling slow okay so we say travel speed is slow on the other hand if if phi of r changes slowly uh, in other words when the gradient of the travel time is small that's the that's the second uh, case here that corresponds to the travel time or excuse me the travel speed being fast okay travel speed is fast and so this you know this brings us back to the original equation where we have 
the equation says that the, the gradient of the travel time is inversely proportional to the speed at that place. And so this uh, confirms our observations. So when the gradient of the travel time is large, the travel speed is low. And when the gradient of the travel time is small, travel speed is fast. They are behaving oppositely to each other. Uh, another observation we are making is that phi of r uh, defines what we call wavefronts. Wavefronts. So where, wherever phi of r is uh, is constant, let's write that defines wave defines wavefronts of light. Wherever phi of r is constant, that represents a place where the light reaches at the same time. That's the front of the wave of the light. While the gradient of uh, phi of r defines what we call rays. Defines rays of light. And that is the direction that the light propagates. And the, the rays of light are always perpendicular to the wavefronts. That's a good place to end part one. In uh, part two, we're going to look at how we can take this iconal equation and we're going to transform it into a set of differential equations. And these are the equations that can be used to simulate the path that light takes through a medium. So thanks for watching. See you.